I'm here with Michael Polson to talk about As in Hell debut record in Peora out September 29th on Metal Blade Records. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're on tour with Volbeat. I saw you guys actually in Toronto on the first show of this leg, and I was I'm happy to say that I wasn't the only asshole in the room. I'm ah. I wasn't alone on that night. There was a lot of other assholes with me there. So it was a great evening. Thank you very much for taking the time. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, let me start off by asking you this. When did you realize that you had this outstanding material in your hands and you needed to see the light of day? Uh, honestly, I don't thought too much about it. The, the thing is... Uh, I was playing death metal back in the days uh, when I was, um, I believe I was 16 or 17. So the death metal thing has always been a huge part of me. And um, I managed to release a couple of demos and I believe it was four records with, with Dominus, which were my first death metal band back in the days. And so death metal has been a huge thing in my life since I discovered extreme music in an i believe i was 13 when i discovered some of the first extreme bands like Bathory and and uh persist and slayer and uh celtic frost and venom stuff like that you know after that it just continue uh uh being an adventure discovering all these great legendary bands that came like death and autopsy and 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 then suddenly um the Swedish scene exploded with, you know, with Carnage, Dismember, Entomb, My List, uh, Grave, and the list continues. So it's been a, a huge adventure ever since. You know, also back in the days, I was doing a lot of tape trading and, and, and uh, just being involved in the death metal community on the ground where there was no internet, where all the information you had was being on the street and just pretty much exchanging flyers or demos or on the ground magazines or vinyls whatsoever. So that part of me has always been there. But when when I found Volbeat, uh, that was because I had so much influence from what I grew up with, with my parents who was constantly listening to the 50s music. And that was tough to implant in the death metal I was doing in Domino. So I took a break from death metal just to go on a new adventure that became Volbeat. And I became so busy with Volbeat that there was no time to look back or have a second project being a death metal band. You know, it was a 24 seven work and, you know, we're still very active and touring a lot and have a lot of records out so there's still a lot of work to do uh, but i never never really doubted myself that i have the material or the riffing or the ideas or inspiration to one day sit down and make a record like i just did in in as in hell but uh it, it also needed to be at a certain time where where i felt it it was right and i was inspired and i had the right lineup um but of course, you know, I don't take anything for granted when it comes to the response of what I'm doing. Uh, I'm very humble about the whole thing, but I'm so proud. I've been talking to a lot of people, including you, that seems to be digging what is going on in Aston Hill. And um, yeah, this is a new chapter and I'm um, very proud of it. And it feels good to finally, you know, to have the time to actually get that out of my system again because it's been there ever since I entered Dominus but I just got so busy with Volbeat that there was no uh, returning back to anything else than than, than Volbeat and uh, I guess just during the pandemic there was a little bit more time being home because that everybody was home you know <laughs> so uh, I had the time to sit down and reflect a little bit and even though that I have two kids now I I'm even more busier than ever. I still managed to find the time to sit down and write a lot of material for us in hell. But um, I guess it's just like there's a time for everything. And when you know, when you feel it, you know, get it out of your system, you know, and 
it, those kind of riffing and ideas just returned to me and that became mess in hell I said this online since I've heard the album that this is going to be uh, one of the best, if not the best, death metal album of 2023. I, I want to fix that statement and say this is going to be one of the best albums of 2023, period, regardless of what genre. It's that good. I, I, I'm glad that you were able to get this out of your system because we need it in our system. Uh, I, I haven't heard an album like this in ages outstanding across all parameters. And you touched on something that I find it's really important, which was finding the right lineup. I honestly feel like this is an outstanding lineup. How difficult was that for you? Or was it even difficult at all? You know what? It was not difficult at all. Uh, to begin with, you know, I have to give LG Petro from Entombed a lot of credit. And it's great to be able to give him credit, even though that he's not around anymore. I believe he's around in spirit. You know, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. And um, I was a very good friend of, um, of LG. And um, there was, you know, I think we all got aware of that he got very sick. And um, uh, I had a phone call from LG when I was at the supermarket at home. And I couldn't pick it up because I was at the register. Um, next time he called, it was during the night. I was sleeping, so I didn't pick up. The next thing I heard was that he passed away and I was really devastated about that. Mostly also because I think he was calling me to actually telling me how bad things was. Um, so that, that, that was, uh, that was very sad. And when Volbeat were in the studio to record Sermon of the Mind, we had a song called Becoming where the opening riff was very much inspired by by Entombed, and we even put that bus pedal on top of that riff to make it sound even more like Entombed, that we end up dedicating uh, the track for LG. And uh, then Volbeat went on tour, and I, I wanted to sit down and write some more songs. I just didn't know what it was. I just knew that I wanted to get that beautiful, ugly, distorted pedal back <laughs> backstage on tour. So I, I asked my guitar tech if he could order it on the net because I wanted to sit down and do some riffing. And he asked, so are you going to do that death metal thing or what? I, said, I, I don't know. I, I know it's, right now I'm just inspired, but you know, please see if you can get hold of the pedal and let's see what happens. And just as we were talking about it, my iPhone just started playing out of nowhere and it started playing full of hell with Entomb. I took that as a call from LG and I've told myself, this time you're fucking picking up, Michael. This is a call from LG actually telling you, it's time to do that fucking death metal again. So when I came home, I just started writing. And it felt like I just left my death metal guitar influences <laughs> yesterday when I picked up the guitar and just started playing. Um, so very quickly, I had a lot of riffs and I start connecting the riffs into songs. And a lot of times I will be visiting uh, Morton, the drummer of Essen Hill, because he lived very close to my house and our children are playing together. And I saw that he had his drums up in his garage. I know that he's now and then he's uh, rehearsing for Ronchi, his, his own band. And um, and I kindly asked him if he wanted to put down some drums on some old school death metal riffing that I had. And he said, I would love to, because he's totally into that alley up and walking, you know, listening to death and autopsy, a bow thrower, uh, old dark throne, malevolent creation, you know, entombed, grave, dismember, the list continues. He's totally into that obituary gore fest, you know. Um, so, so every Friday became Death Metal Friday. So we went into Martin's garage every Friday for a couple of hours, just me and him, um, before we have to pick up our kids at, uh, at school and, 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 and kindergarten. And uh, first he asked, you want us to rehearse? He asked, yeah, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it old school and no fancy pants and stuff, no PA system, no mics. And, nothing just your drums 
I'll find an old amp in the basement and an old guitar and crank it all up to 10. Let's go. And uh, I've been uh, knowing Mark Grave from Legendary Marco uh, for many years. He's now doing Insidious Disease. And we even talked back, back in the days when I had the band Dominus. So our friendship goes way back. And we've been talking and a lot of times doing some kind of old school death metal project but um he always knew that that i was extremely busy in in ball beat so um we never really knew when the time was going to happen for a project like that but i called him up and i said mark it's time and he said time for what time for that old school death metal thing i've been talking about all right i'm on <laughs> you know Say, so, yeah, how do you want me to send the materials? Just me and my friend in the garage, you know, fucking bringing the good noise. And he said, yeah, just record it on your iPhone and send it to me. So, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna sound like a big mess. And he said, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> so, uh, just to help him out a little bit, I put down some demo uh, rolling vocals. So I was just growling down to my iPhone. <laughs> just for him to, you know, see the structure of the uh, the songs. And um, very quickly, me and Martin had for a full album, and uh, we just kept sending the recording from the garage to Mark. He lives in Germany, and, and we live in Denmark. And uh, it just turned out that even though that I wanted to release it by myself, uh, together with uh, my management in Q Prime, uh, Brian Slagle, legendary Brian Slagle from Middle Blade ended up listening to the songs because he was good friends with uh, Q Prime and he said, I really wanted to release this. This sounds great. So for me, that was like, woohoo, finally, you know, after so many years, I'm 48 now and I'm about to release a death metal record with legendary Brian Slagle on Middle Blade. It doesn't get better than that. You know, he knows what he's doing. You know, I don't have to think about that. So um, that was a dream come true. You know, I, I remember back in the days being a, 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 you know, a very young kid tape trading and trying to get a record deal with Dominus, you know, bringing out those demo tapes. So ending up so many years after with a new death metal project on Middle Blade, it's fantastic, you know. Uh, so when we uh, when we entered the studio, uh, we just kindly asked Jacob Hansen, our producer, to put down the bass because you know I've been knowing Jacob for so many years. His his days in in Invocator, you know, we've been playing shows together with Invocator. Dominus has been playing with Invocator, and Jacob is producing all the Vault Beat records. So. Uh, you know, he knows what I'm talking about when I come with a project like that. So it was great that Jacob wanted to put down the bass on the tracks. And Fleming, who, who uh, recorded all the, the solos, the lead guitars, I know Fleming all the way back also to um, back in the days when I was doing Dominus, he had a, his own band called Autumn Leaves. And he's also been an invocator and he's also been a stand-in guitar player in Raunchy, where Morton comes from. So everybody knows each other. So it was like just all friends hooking up again in a studio and, and, and making this um, old school death metal recordings. And uh, we had such a good time doing it that everybody has agreed on that this is the lineup when we go out next year and play some live shows. You know, listening to the record and looking at the, the production of the album, the sound of the album, it, it's clear to me that this is a very guitar focused record. Everything starts with great riffs and those great riffs is what really dominates the pure core of each song. Is that part of your own DNA as a songwriter or is that your own vision of what you like death metal to sound like, to have that predominance of the guitar riff not being muddied by drums and everything else around it? I hear you. I hear you. And I totally get what you're saying. Um, I, I just think, you know, uh, back in the days, and I, I think I speak for a lot of death metal musicians when we picked up our guitars at the first time and just wanted to write songs. 
uh, back in the days, I had no idea what, what is a hook, what is a chorus, what is a bridge, you know, all the things that makes a, a song uh, very structured, you know, we had no ideas. It was almost like the verse also became the chorus back in the days. It was just one big pile of riffing and then you put the growling on top of it, but it worked. But you can you can say that later on, a guy like Chuck, Chuck Schuliner, you could see him develop the death style all from when he started Mantis and were released Free Bloody Go with Death and just the jump he took on leprosy you started to hear structure in his music. So you go, oh, all right. So that's what you call a hook. All right. Okay. You actually have a chorus here. So that's a chorus. All right. So, you, you know, you got, you suddenly figured the whole thing out listening to records like Death. And um, when I found Volbeat, which is more of a rock band being inspired a lot of different styles, I was definitely getting better into understanding the structure of writing music. So uh, my experience of writing music in Volbeat also has a role in S and Hill because I am a songwriter. So that in S and Hill, there will also be some kind of structure, but there's also room for just having parts where it becomes a little messy, you know, <laughs> just like when you're listening to autopsy, you know, it becomes a little bit messy, but it's 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 great mess <laughs> you know so uh those things combine that you know having a structure but let it be loose and as chuck said let the metal flow you know that's the combination i'm trying to have in, in s and hell um where of course the riffing it's very important uh, because i'm very much inspired of the riffing like Chuck Schulman, you know, uh, and I think it's important that you can actually hear the riffing when you have riffs like that. It, a song like Desert Doom, I have to ask you this, because listening to the album, that one stood out to me, because I felt like that could have been on a Volbeat record. It's just that you guys turned the knob, not to 10, but all the way to 11 on the death metal scale and kind of gave it an extra kick. Do, do you see that, that bass line riff there perhaps been able to be used on, on a Volbeat track? I hear what you're saying, uh, but I never thought of it. Honestly, I never thought of it. Uh, I do get maybe the more uh, punkish uh, rock person. Like, it could maybe have been on a, a Volbeat song, but I never thought about it, honestly, until you actually say it now. So, uh, but I, I do believe that most, of, you know, 90% of the, the song doesn't, belong in a Volbeat song, but I totally, get, I totally get what you're saying, and it's definitely not off, so um, that's very interesting. That was the only one, that was the only one for me, because everything else was like, man, this is a breath of fresh air, and, and that takes me to the, to the next question for you, because I, I grew up listening to death metal in the late 80s, early 90s, and the death yeah. metal that you're listening to, to today, like bands that are coming out now, not to say bands that are coming out now are not as good as those, but the sound of death metal has changed from from decade to decade uh, are you more of a fan of of that old school sound in terms of what it brought like the the raw flavor that it brought forward versus the more polished cleaned uh, more boxed in style approach that we see from a lot of bands these days uh i'm not taking anything away from a, a lot of the new bands because i'm i'm also listening to uh, a lot of new bands uh, there's some very interesting names out there who are doing a really good job uh, but my love and passion and, and where I'm mostly emo emotional attached is to the old school bands that were recording in studios and, and keeping it simple. Band, you know, bands like Autopsy and, and, and Death, even though that Death became more technical at the very end, but those old school death metal releases that were late 80s, early 90s is truly where my inspiration are. And that's how I really like the sound and production of those albums. And the bands were also going into the, to the studio to record together. Today, people are exchanging files and have their own little home studios and using different kind of tools to get to the point but you know i'm not taking anything away from how they're doing it 
you know, all respect and power to all the bands, how they want to do their stuff. As in hell went into the Jacob Henson studio, real studio, and it was me and Morton just recording live the drums and my guitar. We basically played the songs live in the studio. Afterwards, I put a, a couple of more uh, rhythm guitars on top of the, the, the one that I recorded with Morton in, in, the, in the studio, just to make it sound even more fat and, yeah. and, and brutal. Yeah. And, and, um, and, 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 and Mark also took the trip from Germany, going into the studio and recording his vocals. Uh, Fleming did record his solos at home, where he had his little home studio. Uh, but basically, the rhythm guitars, the drums, the singing has been done in the studio. And we didn't do that much to the sound. We wanted to have a sound that had a great balance of something that could have been released in the 90s. But I do also believe that our experience makes the, 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 the sound sound maybe a little bit more, I'll not use the word polished, but just because we're more in control of what we're doing, it probably sounds a little bit more nice, if you can put it that way. I, I, I totally get that. I, I want to ask you uh, one last question. That is, you touched there briefly on the fact that that's going to be the live lineup. So this is not going to be just a studio project for you. You you're gonna you're gonna tour. You're gonna play shows in support of this release. Well, the the main essence of the band is me and Morton and Mark. Uh, we were three guys starting this project, and we just kindly asked Jacob to play the bass and Fleming to play the lead guitar. Afterwards, we're but discussing if they were interested in going out and playing live shows next year and they said we would love to and we thought well you know everybody knows each other everyone everyone want to do this there's no reason for changing that suddenly so what you hear on the record is going to be the lineup that's going to go out next year and play some live shows well that's great news and on that note i just want to say this that uh, I've I've said this a million times on videos on our YouTube channel that Volbeat is the greatest thing to come out of Denmark since the Laudrup brothers. But now we have As in Hell to come out of Denmark as well. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for, for, for chatting with me about the record. Outstanding album. I honestly, I cannot find enough words to describe how good, how hard hitting this record is. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. My pleasure. All the best. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, man. Bye.